Hey YouTubers, this is Steve. Uh, I've got an interesting video for you today. This is the uh, Taurus uh, Tracker. It's a 4 inch barrel tracker. And uh, many of you basically have mentioned to me that you don't like the Taurus for uh, its quality, but um, you know, I have different opinions about the Taurus myself that you know I like it very well. Some of the negative points about this is uh, when I initially got it, um, I found out that there were some head spacing problems, and so I sent it off to Taurus International, and they fixed the uh, head spacing problem between the uh, cylinder and the uh, forcing cone here. And pretty much uh, when this came back, I took it to the range and uh, managed to get it uh, tuned to my sights so that I could shoot it very accurately. If you look at this uh, from the perspective of uh, the sight, sight view, this is basically what you get to see when you are shooting it. Let me try and hold this up if I can. So that's the sight view you get basically when you're shooting it. Okay. The, the what makes this this revolver successful? I, I've shot both Smith and Wessons, I've shot Rugers, and I've also shot um, Taurus. And what makes it really successful is basically this rubberized grips. And I know a lot of you in YouTube basically hate this grip. They change this grip out to a whole grip, you know, whatever uh, floats your boat. But this grip is the rubberized rip grip. Takes quite a bit of the um, uh, re uh, resonance from from the body. So that when you're shooting at 357, uh, you you don't feel that uh, resonance coming back into your hand. So that's why you know Tauruses. When anybody talks about Taurus, they say that it shoots like a kitten. They actually mean exactly that. You don't feel it in your hand. In the Smith and Wessons, basically, the back rib here, the the body frame itself, comes out of the back of the grips. And I've shot it quite a number of times using Smith and Wesson, and I can feel the resonance going right through my hand. And so it really, you know, uh, gets a beating, uh, either in 357 Magnum or the 44 Magnum. Um, in the Ruger, basically, they are even a uh, little bit better than the Smith & Wessons when it comes to shooting, because they've got really good grips also. So I think so basically that the grips themselves basically uh, makes a difference on the end point of uh, your shooting experience. I know that a lot of people have changed the normal grips out with whole grips to see if they could get rid of the, some of the pains that they have been having. having. So, a um, little bit of specifications about this this uh, revolver. Uh, this actually, uh, they claim to say it's a 4 inch barrel, but I did a measurement of it. It's brought 3.9 inches from the forcing cone to the tip of the revolver. And then uh, end point to end point here, the total uh, length uh, would be about 8.6 inches, and the height of this is approximately 5.5 um, inches in, in height. Um, the weight itself, without any rounds in the cylinder, it's approximately around 35.35 uh, uh, ounces or 2.2 pounds. Um, in, in weight, so uh, it's, it's quite a bit he he heavy revolve to carry. Um, the one other point that I would recommend for anybody who you know wants to use this as a uh, side carry, I won't recommend it for concealed carry, but for side carry or for hunting or trail gun, this is an excellent uh, revolver. Uh, is to try and get the trigger lightened. Uh, a friend of mine basically she bought the same revolver as me. Uh, for own personal defense use for home and uh, the trigger was too heavy for the handle uh, so I recommend uh, basically anybody having this get the trigger job done so there are basically springs in here that can be basically modified to lighten the trigger to make it really light shooting then the other topic that I wanted to talk to you about today is um, regards the sights uh, know that they come with really uh, a front sight that's basically a paper that's on it and the rear is adjustable I'm planning to put in a, a red dot sight for this so I'm basically getting um, 
rails we've installed on this. I've taken to the gunsmith to ask them to install the rails. Um, and you know, the rails can be bought online, not from Taurus, but uh, from a, a third party company called Winegut. And basically, they will sell you those rails. What they do is they remove the back sides out, they have to put in the sides and then, you know, tap and drill the holes for the uh, external rails that goes on this so that you know you can sort of hone your skills for me without any modifications to this revolver right now I can shoot it very accurately so you do the calibration of the sights because they have both windage and elevation uh, controls on this back rear sights the next uh, thing I want to talk to you about is regards to cleaning a revolver a lot of you basically uh, on YouTube I've seen you guys uh, spend a lot of time cleaning a revolver and it's it's critical that you know you spend some time cleaning the wall because of the issues that um, it builds up. Ninety percent of your cleaning happens. Let me take this out. Right by the forcing cone. Basically, where carbon deposit builds up really a lot. The other part is in the front of the cylinder here. It all blackens out, right? This particular revolver has porting in front to keep the front muzzle rise. So that's the other area that you see carbon build up. So what I recommend for people that do not want to spend too much time uh, struggling through this um, is to use a lead remover cloth. Uh, I, whenever I have to clean up this revolver, the first thing I do is basically I use a nice bristle brush to basically get rid of all the carbon deposits that I see on the old areas, that means in the porting area by the forcing cone in the front of the cylinder and then once you remove the initial um, lead then I'll spend some time basically using this uh, product called lead remover from Birchwood KC going through instead of basically using the whole piece of cloth, cut out a strip small strip and then basically go through and spend some time cleaning the front of the cylinder. Uh, this particular cylinder basically builds up carbon, I mean lead really really fast so take your time cleaning this. It's not, you know, it takes a while but with, with, the, with the lead remover you'll spend lesser time cleaning it than you know using a, any kind of wire brush or something like that. The same thing for the forcing cone. There's some areas in the forcing cone here that you know you can't use a lead cloth especially the top side of this in that case what I do is basically I use a wire brush and try and hit the top part of this forcing cone area to get rid of the carbon that's the only time I use the wire brush most of the time I don't need to and then the porting area you can use the wire brush to get rid of the um, carbon deposits I'm trying to do this with minimum amount of chemicals uh, so that uh, you know uh, you're able to get this done in a very quick way the other part that you have to also do is also clean the inside of the barrel and uh, I know a lot of you basically don't like using the uh, brush, uh, copper brush uh, uh, through this but you, uh, what I recommend is basically putting a rod through in front of the system and then you know putting in the, the copper brush right through this, the wire brush through this and then you know forcing it out. Uh, that's one method of doing it. Just remember the direction is one direction. Don't basically scrub it back and forth. You, you, you tear up your barrel. The other method, if you're going to be a much more smarter person, is to buy um, a ball snake and drop the ball snake through here and yank it through. That cleans up the inside of the barrel. You saw the same thing you have to do also on the, um, the cylinder here where the rounds are basically fed into. Uh, with that, basically, I'll just use a, right, a regular um, uh, plastic jag with uh, some um, uh, hoppies number nine to clean up the inside of this chamber. Once you basically use the lead cloth to remove all lead from this revolver, then what you want to go through is finally after that, uh, use the uh, silicone polish uh, cloth to basically go through a good quick wipe down. For general shooting, I recommend you basically doing this and you know you ask yourself um, how much time do you have to spend you know with your revolver if you basically clean your revolver every time that you shoot 
uh, it keeps it in, in peak condition and you don't have to spend time basically down the road scrubbing out more, more lead so having the lead remover is going to save you a lot of time okay if any questions uh, do PM me the Tracker is a very inexpensive revolver to purchase in comparison to the Ruger and the Smith & Wesson. The top of the line is always Smith & Wesson. Uh, I don't know why they keep the prices high for such a uh, si simple revolver. And then the next price level set down is basically the GP100s in the Ruger platform. And finally you have the Tauruses. Uh, Tauruses, they have the 4-inch model, this particular one so-called so the 4-inch model tracker. They also have the 6-inch model. I prefer to have things in the 4-inch model uh, because they're more easy to control and you know, um, in comparison 6-inch for, for my shooting. I don't know about anybody else. All right. Uh, if any questions, do uh, contact me and I'll definitely respond to you. Thank you.